In this presentation, we will record the receipt of payment for an invoice that was created in the past and make the related deposit. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. We will enter this information into QuickBooks Pro 2019. Here we are in the home page. We currently have the open windows open. The way to open the open windows is to go to the view drop down up tab up top and go to the open windows list. So what we're going to do now is we're going to record the receipt of payment and we're also going to record the related deposit. Those two items can be found in the customer section of the home tab where we will remind ourselves what's going on here. We're going to create an invoice that has already been done at this point then we would receive the payment. So an invoice would have happened for uh, the type of company that invoice, they do the work and then they invoice. And then we expect to receive payment in the future. Therefore, this receive payment means that we are receiving pay payment for a, an invoice in the past. If we got a payment for the work done in the same time period, then we would just use the sales, um, the sales receipt rather than an invoice and then receive payment. So we're going to have the receive payment and then we'll go and deposit those receipt payments. Remember that QuickBooks usually has this middle step unless we tell QuickBooks not to have it, which is to deposit this information or this payment into undeposited funds, not the checking account first, and then go to the bank and deposit it in the checking account. That helping us to group the uh, deposits into the same type of grouping that will be found on the uh, bank statements helping us with the bank reconciliations so that's our goal uh, that's our objective if you don't want to do that if you want to have the receive payments deposit directly into your checking account it's possible to do so by setting up the preferences uh, to do so so we're going to go into your receive payments we're going to type in the customer we're going to receive a payment from it's going to be anderson guitars if we select the drop down it's right there we could start to type in anderson guitars and that'll also populate it so i'm going to say anderson guitars there it is tab I'm going to say that it's going to be a check I'm going to tab through this now uh the date is going to be january uh, 28th 19. so we're, we're working in 2019 january 28th now, we're, I'm not going to put the amount there because I could just check it off. This is the invoice related to it. If we double click on it, you'll see the actual invoice. I'm going to close this back out. Here we go. So I'm going to, I'm going to check this item and that populates the amount paid up here automatically. If we were to type in the amount paid, it would select the invoice that would be most likely appropriate. So that's what we have here the the check number wouldn't be our check number it would be the uh, customer check number i'm not going to put it in for the informational purpose now it's not a required field if you do want this payment not to go to undeposited funds but go to the uh, checking account you can select this item uh, and and change that those settings so what will this do then it's going to decrease the accounts receivable and it's going to put the money into undeposited funds so let's record this and see if it does what we would expect. I'm going to save and close. Once we do that, note uh, you'll see the one item here in the deposit screen. And that's going to indicate, of course, that we have one item that's basically in undeposited funds. One item that we think should be going to the checking account, which is not yet in the checking account. So let's see what that looks like on the financials. We're going to go to the reports up top. Company and financial. We'll start off with the balance sheet. So we'll select the balance sheet. We're going to change the date. Let's go to the range up top, uh, customize report, and change it from 010119 to 12.31.19. It's going to be the year we are working on. We're going to select OK. And so what we did is a receive payment. Now, it didn't go into the checking account. It instead went into undeposited funds. So if we double click on undeposited funds, we'll then see that item here the 430 double clicking on that we'll see our if we close this back out we can see that the other side is going here i'm going to make this a little wider it's going to accounts receivable so that would make sense i'm going to close this back out 
So we got a payment for something received that, that we did in the past. We did work in the past, and therefore the amount owed to us by the customer is going down. Here's the receivables. I'm going to double click on that. And there's that last receivable. Double clicking on that. There is our customer payment. Closing this back out, there's one other report we'll check, and that's going to be the accounts receivable. Closing this back out. We're going to go to the reports up top. We're going to go to the customers and receivable and take a look at the customer balance detail report, which will be a summary of the receivables. So if we take a look at this, we got still uh, $1,740.27 back to the balance sheet in the open windows. That's the amount in uh, accounts receivable. So hopefully it is because this is supporting that amount. <laughs> and then we're going to go back to the customer balance detail. Anderson uh, is who we were working with. Here is that payment Anderson made. So it matches up here. Here's the invoice. Here's the payment. No longer owes us any money. Nothing's owed from Anderson. That's the kind of thing we should see in the customer balance detail report. It's, it's, it's going up. It's going down. All right, we're going to close that back out. And we're going to do this again. I'm going to go back to the home page. We're going to go to the receive payment. So in the home page, receive payment. We're not going to deposit it yet because we're doing this all in the same day. And then we're going to deposit them at the end of the day, grouping them together so that they appear on the bank statement all in the same way as they will appear in our system here in QuickBooks. So we're going to go to receive payments once again. We're going to have the, the name's going to be Eric Music, which we can find with the drop down or just type in the Eric Music and tab and we're going to keep it as a check and this time I'll, I'll type in the amount which is going to be that 525 that we received again we're imagining we got a check in the mail for 525 from eric music and of course it's for this invoice so if i hit uh, tab it then checks it off here for us automatically it says oh you got a deposit it must be for this invoice if it's not then we would uncheck this and say that's not it uh, and we got to deposit for some other reason. And we'll do that in the future. We'll see why we, we might do that in the future. So that's what we got. Again, this is going to decrease accounts receivable. And the other side is going to go not to the checking account, but to undeposited funds. Let's save and close and check that out. So we'll go to the balance sheet up top. We're going to go to the undeposited funds is what we have now at 955, double clicking on that. And here's our new deposit, the 525. Notice what undeposited funds does. It goes up and then it zeroes out. Now it's going back up and hopefully we're going to zero it out when we go to the bank with these checks. So we're going to double click on this item. And there is our customer payment. Closing this out. Closing this out. The other side's in accounts receivable. So there's accounts receivable. Double clicking on that. We then see the 525 here. The other side going to undeposited funds. If we double click on that, then here's our customer payment. Closing this out, closing this back out, back to the home page. We're going back to the home page and now we're going to go to the bank at the end of the day. So it's the end of the day. We got these two deposits indicated by QuickBooks with this little two here saying, hey, you got two deposits that are in undeposited funds aren't quite in the checking account according to our system yet. If you want to put them in the checking account, we're going to select the record deposits as we'll do now. So we'll check record deposits. And then again, we get this little pop-up window. It doesn't take us directly to the deposit screen where we would manually enter the deposit, but it links it to those two items. It's these two items that are in undeposited funds created by the receive payment item, debiting the undeposited fund not going into the checking account. We're going to go to the bank with both of these. So I'm going to check both of them off. Say that adds up to this uh, 955.50. We're going to say OK. And we're going to keep the date at uh, January 28th. That's what we want. And everything looks get good there. Now, remember, you, you just want to remember all, always what are these. Every time you enter something, what's the journal entry? Whenever you enter something with a deposit screen, it's going to deposit into the checking account. So it's going to deposit in the checking account. And then the other side, in this case, is undeposited funds listed here. Those are going to be the two accounts affected, always at least two in the double entry accounting system so we're going to save and close this we'll go back to the balance sheet and now we can go to the checking account double clicking on the checking accounts and here it is now it's got a split here in the other account because there's two items in there but if we double click on it we know that it's the deposit and they're both going to undeposited funds so i'm going to close this back out 
The advantage once again here being that although this is two deposits, the bank statement will reflect this one, I mean, although these are two items, two checks, the bank statement will reflect this 955 if we deposit them into the bank at the same time. And that's the point. So, so we want it to basically match up to our books so that when we check it off, compare our books to the bank statement, we can do so easily. So I'm going to close this back out. Then we're going to go to the other side, which was undeposited funds, but it disappeared. The undeposited funds went away. Why? Because it's at zero now. So if we want to check the transaction, we can't really drill down on our, our normal balance sheet. We could find it two different ways. We could go to the uh, lists drop down and go to the chart of accounts and then find the undeposited funds, which they put as a current asset. And if we double click on it, we'll go to our register. So here's the register and now here's our transaction. If we double click on that, it'll go to the deposit screen. So that's one way we can find this. The other way we can find this is to uh, go to a report called a trial balance. So to do that, we'll go to the reports up top and we'll go to accounting and taxes, trial balance. And we'll change the date range from 010119 to 123119. And then we got this undeposited fund should be here now. It's zero. But the trial balance is typically going to pick up not all accounts typically, but any accounts that had activity during the period. So although it's zero, there was activity in it during the period. Trial balance puts it there so that we can basically double click on it if we want to get into this transaction report. And then, of course, we see our uh, Eric music. It's going to we could see the zero started here and then we made deposits. And then, or we, you know, it went up because we put money into undeposited funds. And then we made the deposit into our checking account, making, uh, making the balance go down to zero. That's going to be the trend of the undeposited funds. If that's not the trend, if, if we've got a running balance in undeposited funds, probably there's a problem. So those are going to be the two sides of this transaction. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.